Hello all, welcome to this video on distributed computing. Today I'll be talking about Lampot's Bakery algorithm. Let us begin by looking into what concurrent programming is. Concurrent programming is a programming methodology that allows multiple tasks to run simultaneously. It's often used in computer science to design software systems that can handle multiple tasks at once. EW Digextra presented an algorithm whereby N, mainly independent computers with a common data store as their sole means of communication, could contend for exclusive control of any given resource, that is a storage, I.O. device, etc. Now, to use this resource, the computer had to gain access to the critical section of the algorithm within which one and only one computer at a time could be executing. Leslie B. Lampot is an American computer scientist who was awarded the 2013 Turing Award for explaining and formulating the behavior of distributed computing systems. That is, systems made up of multiple autonomous computers that communicate by exchanging messages with one another. Lamport also considered the problem of mutual exclusion, which was developed to keep processes from writing to the same computer memory location. The solution, which he called the Bakery algorithm, involved assigning an integer to each process waiting to write to memory, much the same way that a bakery patron obtains a number upon entering the store. Operating systems have traditionally dealt with multi-process synchronization using algorithms based on first principles like the well-known bakery algorithm, high-level constructs such as semaphores and monitors, and special atomically executed instructions supported by special purpose hardware, for example, test and set, swap and compare and swap. These algorithms are applicable to all shared memory systems. Lamport proposed the Lamport's bakery algorithm for N process mutual exclusion in shared memory systems. The algorithm is so called because it mimics the actions that customers follow in a bakery store. A process wanting to enter the critical section picks a token number that is one greater than the elements in the array, which is choosing. Its values range for processes from 1 to n. Now, the processes enter the critical section in the increasing order of the token numbers. In case of concurrent access to the choosing variable by multiple processes, the processes may have the same token number. In this case, a unique lexicographic order is defined on the tuple token PID and this dictates the order in which the processes enter the critical section. The algorithm can be shown to satisfy the three requirements of critical section problem which are mutual exclusion, bounded weighting and progress. Now we'll have a look at the algorithm. So here there are major two variables, one which is a boolean variable called choosing. So its value will be either true or false for each of the process. And then there is an integer variable which is the timestamp of processes. Now the code following this statement will be the code for the entry section. Now in the entry section, a process chooses a timestamp for itself and reset it to zero in the exit section. Code for exit section where it changes the timestamp to zero. Now in the lines from 1a to 1c, each process chooses a timestamp for itself as the maximum of latest timestamp of all the processes plus one. These steps are non-atomic, thus, Multiple processes could be choosing timestamps in overlapping durations. When process i reaches the line 1d, it has to check the status of each other process j to deal with the effects of any race conditions in selecting the timestamps. 
So in lines from 1D to 1F, which is this line, the process I will be serially checking the status of each other process in this condition here. Now if J is selecting a timestamp for itself, J's selection interval may be overlapping with that of I, so that can lead to an unknown order of timestamp values. Process I needs to make sure that any other process J that has begun to execute the line 1B, which is this, concurrently with itself and may still be executing that line, does not assign itself the same timestamp. Otherwise, mutual exclusion could be violated as I would enter the critical section and subsequently J having a lower process ID and hence a lexicographically lower timestamp would also enter the critical section. Hence, I waits for J's timestamp to stabilize. So for that, what it does is, it will set the choosing variable value to false. Now once this is stabilized, I moves from line 1E to 1F. Either J is not requesting, the, so in that case J's timestamp is 0 or J is requesting. Now this line 1F determines the relative priority between I and J. The process with a lexicographically lower timestamp has higher priority and enters the critical section. The other process has to wait, which is here. Hence, mutual exclusion is satisfied here. Now, by bounded waiting is also satisfied here because each time a process J can overtake process I at most once after it has completed choosing its timestamp. So, the second time J chooses its timestamp, that value will be necessarily larger than the I's timestamp is if the case is I has not entered the critical section yet. So, progress is guaranteed here because the lexicographic order is a total order and the process with the lowest timestamp at any time in the loop that is being checked in the lines from 1D to 1G, only they are guaranteed to enter the critical section. Now we will look into the space complexity of this algorithm. A lower bound of n registers, specifically the timestamp array, has been shown for the shared memory critical section problem. Thus, one cannot hope to have a more space efficient algorithm for distributed shared memory mutual exclusion. Now looking into the time complexity. So in many environments, the level of contention may be low. The big O of n overhead of the entry section does not scale well for such environments. This concern is addressed by the field of fast mutual exclusion that aims to have big O of one time overhead for the entry and exit sections of the algorithm in the absence of contention. Although this algorithm guarantees mutual exclusion and progress, unfortunately, this fast algorithm has a price, which is in the worst case, it does not guarantee bounded delay. Now we will see an explanation of bakery algorithm with an example. So here we have processes P0 to P3. So num will be the token value that I explained in the algorithm before. So this is the code for entry section where the token value or num value is assigned based on calculating the max of all the num values already present plus 1. So here each process will have a unique process ID. So each process is associated with a variable num which is the token value. So initially all of these will be 0. Now to enter the critical section the process needs 
to execute the entry section. Now suppose we assume P1 needs to enter the critical section. So what happens? It enters the critical section and it will generate a token. So the token value will be max of all these values plus 1 which is 1. Now it does the condition checking here. So what happens here is it checks if there is any other process J whose num value is non-zero and whose num value is less than that of i. We see that there is no such process present here. So what it does is P1 will skip the entire loop and it will enter the critical section. So it has entered the critical section. Now suppose P3 wishes to enter the critical section and perform the entry section code. So P3 will get a token 2 because max of already present value plus 1 that will be 2. Now it does the condition checking. According to the condition there is another process P1 whose num value is non-zero and P1's num value is less than that of P3. So P3 has to wait until P1 completes its execution. Suppose P0 wishes to enter the critical section. After executing the entry section code, the token value will be max of these, that is 2 plus 1, which is 3. Now P0 will do the condition checking at it will see that there are two processes p1 and p3 whose num values are non-zero and both their num values are less than that of p0 so p0 has to wait until p1 and p3 will complete the critical section execution now this works based on the first come first serve basis so p1 will be executed followed by p3 and p0 in the exit code, we see that the num value is reset to 0. Suppose P1 completes the critical section. Now its num value is reset to 0. P3 will break the while loop and it will enter the critical section. P0 will wait for P3 to complete it. Now here you can see that each section is atomic. That is... This will also ensure that every process will receive a unique token number. Now consider if these sections were not atomic. Suppose P1 wishes to enter the critical section. So P1 will calculate its token number. So what it does is it will copy the num value of all the processes to temporary variables assigned for them in the processor. Now, before executing the critical section, we assume, suppose P1 got blocked and it lost the access to the processor. Now, suppose P3 gets access to the processor. So, P3 wishes to enter the critical section and it will calculate the token number. So, it will copy the num value of all the processes to the temporary variables. And after that, suppose P3 gets the token number 1. And that is when, suppose P3 gets blocked, then P1 will regain the processor control now. Since P1 had already copied the num values into temporary variables, it will calculate the token value based on that, which will also be 1. Now we see that both of them have the same token number. So, to overcome this situation, we need to modify the code. Now if token number of same, we add a condition where we check the process ID. So if the token number is same, we check the ID. If the one has a lower process ID, that will have the priority. So based on this, P1 will be entering the critical section. Now there can be another issue that might arise. So, suppose P1 wants to enter the critical section and it has started calculating the token. 
Now before calculating the token, it just got blocked and P3 gained control. So after copying it to temporary variables, it calculated its token as 1. Let P3 be continuing the execution. P3 will be checking the condition. Now P3 checks and see there is no other number that satisfies the condition. So P3 can safely enter the critical section and while in critical section, suppose P3 gets blocked and preempted. Now again we assume P1 is regaining the processor. So it will also calculate the token value as 1 because it has already copied the values, the num values into temporary variables before. Now both of them have the same num value. That is the same token number. P1 will check the condition and both of them have the same num value. So you are taking the priority of process ID based on that P1 can enter the critical section. Now what happens is both of them are currently in the critical section. Now mutual condition is clearly violated here. So what can be done is we will keep one more array which we called choosing of i. This was explained in the algorithm before. It will be set to true before calculating the token number and to false after setting the token number. So to prevent a process from entering the critical section while another process is calculating its token number, this condition is added here. That is just before this. If any process is in the midst of choosing a token, its choosing variable will be true. Since the condition will be true, other processes will wait accordingly. Now if the choosing variable is false for every process, then the second condition here will be checked. Now this code being applied to the previous example, suppose P1 wants to enter the critical section, it will choose its variable to true. Now num values as usual is stored in the temporary variables. Now suppose P1 gets blocked and preemption occurred, P3 gets the processor and it will set its flag to true and it will calculate its token number as 1. Now P3 checks for the first condition. So P3 will set its choosing variable to true. So hence choosing is true for both P1 and P3. So P3 gets blocked in this while loop. Now after some time maybe P1 will regain the processor and it will calculate the token value which is 1 again. P1 is checking the condition if the choosing of any other process is true. So it will see there is no other process like that. The reason being P3 calculated its token value. So this true will be set to false. That's why and also it lost the control of the processor. So what happens? The second condition is checked for P1. So P1 and P3 are having the same num value. Now they will be chosen based on the process ID. So P1 can enter the critical section because its ID is lesser than that of P3 and P3 has to wait. So according to this, only one process will be allowed to enter the critical section. So hence mutual exclusion is guaranteed here. If one process is in the reminder section, its num value will be set to 0. So thus, only processes which has a non-zero num value is participating in the decision of whether it should enter the critical section or not. So based on priority, every process will be served. Hence, progress and bounded waiting conditions are satisfied here. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.